coming from the city, you kind of wonder what's going to happen. Um, we ended up picking a spot in the front of the building, which I was very concerned about again because I figured anybody can pass by if some if we're planning to feed, give the children food from this garden, if somebody comes by and throws something or does something, what are we going to do? But everybody in Princeton assured me that um, this would not happen. And um, there were teachers who were very excited about getting involved in the garden also. And I think to um, calm me down, uh, we agreed that we would put a fence around the garden. So that, I think that helped me move farther, move farther ahead with the project. Parents, children, interested teachers, not everybody, but a few who were interested, who got together to say, what can we do here? And um, they actually planned uh, working after school, working during school on weekends to come and clear the land and um, till the soil and do all the things that one needs to do to have a garden. It's been several years now and the garden thrives. Um, our world language teacher takes his fourth grade as part of a unit of study, takes them out there in the spring and they do some planting. And then when the kids are in the fifth grade, they go out and they harvest it and they make some special dishes that, um, that they use that um, are uh, from the country that they're studying. So it's, it's really become a great part of our school life. One year we had a bumper crop of lettuce and so we brought the lettuce into the cafeteria. Our um, lunch supervisor from uh, our food services program, she incorporated our lettuce into the salad. We made sure that everybody knew about this, the children, the parents, it was very exciting. Um, another year we had um, a chef from one of the local restaurants came to collect tomatoes, to take the tomatoes. We had so many that we didn't know what to do with them. And I couldn't believe it, with the chef apron, with the chef's hat, he came with these baskets and he was very excited about filling. I said, what are you going to do with this? And uh, he said he's going to make sauces, he's going to use it in salads, and he's going to use it in different recipes. So probably more than anybody else in that school, I've learned so much and really the, the reality of um, <coughs> that food does, that all of this doesn't just come from ShopRite, but comes from a place where you plant it and, and harvest it. Then we had Garden State on Your Plate come along, which has been, um, again, at first, I, I'm not quick to jump on the bandwagon. I'm, I'm always looking at like, yeah, but this, but that. And I was very concerned about bringing this in, basically in terms of um, how are we going to deal with the food services? Will it interfere with their program? Um, how are we going to fit it into our lunch hours? We have a very tight schedule. There's no time in between. Uh, several classes come in for lunch. As soon as they're getting up and going out for recess, we have what, other groups coming in. It's a constant rotation. And uh, then this group wanted to come in and do a food tasting um, somewhere during our lunch hour. And um, after we had great discussion and planning, um, it actually came to pass. The first one was a, a bit tough. The first tasting was we were quite rushed in trying to get everything done, but after that we really got it down. Chef Alex um, is also a parent of the children in the community, and um, I had his kids in my school. And he came with beets. And the others came with tomatoes, with chard, cranberries, we're doing sweet potato. So I, I thought that was very brave of him, and um, I had no intention of tasting what he had brought with him, <laughs> because I, I know beets. I've had them when I was a kid and didn't like them, and, um, and they're very popular now on restaurant menus, and I always have to substitute something else <laughs> for the beets. And um, I was forced. I was forced to pretend. Well, the kids are all there, parents <laughs> par sure. encouraged teachers are there and um, they said try the beets and he did something magic with them <laughs> because um, it, it was um, a chilled beet orange soup and, and it was also I think they were cooked beets <coughs> and raw. his beets tasted different from anything <laughs> that I had ever tasted and I really was surprised and even some of the children who were, were tasting didn't want to and I was telling them, uh, they were hearing and seeing what was going on, and I think it helped them also give it a try. But it, it really does matter. It's very important that we're giving children an opportunity to learn about foods, taste foods that they're not familiar with, because it really can make a difference in the long run. 
And I think that that's something very special the um, Garden State on your plate is bringing to us. And they've done it in such a wonderful way. I really have to compliment you because um, they, they've made it work to fit into our rushed lunch, lunch hours. Um, it's unobtrusive. We have the tasting. We have parents in there who are asking the children their opinions about the tasting. And we still have time for, them, for the children to eat their lunch and get out to recess, um, or have recess and then come and have lunch. But it's, it's really been working out very, very nicely.